Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our discussion about biochemistry. Please watch this playlist in order. Talk about adult beriberi today. What is beriberi? Beriberi is vitamin B1 deficiency. B1 is also known as thiamine deficiency. Adult beriberi has two main subtypes, wet beriberi and dry beriberi. Cardiomyopathy and CHF is wet. Neuropathy is freaking dry. As you know, vitamins are divided into water-soluble and fat-soluble. Vitamin B1 is water-soluble, therefore deficiency is more likely, and beriberi is vitamin B1 deficiency. Let's review B complex, eight of them. By the way, B looks like an eight. So B1 is thiamine, B2 is riboflavin, B3 is niacin, B4 does not exist, B5 is pantothenic acid, B6 is Pyridoxin, B7 is biotin, B9 is folate, B12 is cobalamin. You can say B4 does not exist because it's history. Like B4, it's B4. Okay, it's, it's history. What's the most common cause of vitamin B1 deficiency? It's white rice. I've told you before that diseases that happen to you if you have vitamin B1 deficiency are numerous, including Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome or WKS. Thiamine metabolism dysfunction syndromes, which include two. Number one, thiamine responsive megaloblastic anemia. Second one is biotin thiamine responsive basal ganglion disease. And the third one is beriberi. We have two types. We have infantile beriberi and adult beriberi. Adult beriberi is subdivided into wet and dry, like KFC chicken. Wet is CHF, dry is neuropathy. Thank you so much. I've told you before about the guy who discovered beriberi. His name was Takaki Kanekiro. Dr. Takaki discovered beriberi in sailors who ate only white rice. And therefore, in Japan, beriberi is also known as kake. So kake is beriberi. Kake, thanks to Takake. By the way, this is not only in Japanese. If you open Merriam-Webster dictionary, not the medical dictionary, the good old English dictionary, You'll find kake equals beriberi. If you want to really embarrass your professor, say, Professor, I was like looking up the English dictionary today and I found a disease that I've never heard of. Have you ever heard of kake? Like, what? Kake? No, I've not. Like, is, what dictionary is that? And then you open the dictionary in his face and see kake, it's beriberi. Oh, I've never heard of that. Good. Kake or beriberi is either infantile or adult. Adult is divided into two, wet and dry. Some people divide into three, wet, beriberi, dry, beriberi, and gastrointestinal beriberi. We have talked about infantile beriberi in the previous video, so please watch it. The playlist is called biochemistry. Now this slide is gonna make history. Adult beriberi, dry or wet? Why dry? This is neuropathy. Why? Due to demyelination, so dry, demyelination cool how about wet this is the heart because you also have edema you have like jugular venous distension increased heart rate chf all of this is wet so we call it wet very very tongue-in-cheek peripheral neuropathy and dry is it like asymmetrical or symmetrical it's symmetrical mostly proximal or distal it's distal and by the way you get difficulty arising from the squatting position sometimes which means it can be proximal and distal. Is it sensory or motor? It's both. Since it's sensory, you'll have sensory ataxia, decreased sensation, as well as pain. So, vitamin B1 deficiency is one of the causes of pain. If you have a patient complaining of pain, one of your things that should be on your differential is B1 deficiency. Good luck if any doctor could diagnose that. Like, they are all gone. Only I am left, because I'm the chosen one, which makes me delusional, which is a mental disease. Bizarre delusions are one of the symptoms of schizophrenia. Okay, shut up, medicosis, and continue. All right, motor symptoms include weakness. Neuropathy will lead to symmetrical muscle wasting. You will have decreased deep tendon reflexes, also known as hyporeflexia. Nystagmus and vomiting are possible. See here the demyelination of just destroy the myelin sheath because it's dry beriberi. Wet beriberi, on the other hand, has the dilated cardiomyopathy as well as cardiomegaly. Your heart is super big. Too much love. Remember when your grandma 
said to you, do not love your boyfriend too much or your heart will be big. You'll get cardiomegaly. Remember the name of your boyfriend? Berry Berry. And he was wit. I mean witty. Since you have vitamin B1 deficiency, your dehydrogenase enzymes will be malfunctioning, including the famous pyruvate dehydrogenase and the infamous alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. This will lead to decreased ATP, and this will lead to cardiac pathology, including the cardiomyopathy, the CHF, which will lead to edema. This edema is dependent bilateral pitting edema. Of course, it's a transudate. If it's pitting, it's a transudate. Exudate is non-pitting. Lymphedema starts pitting, but actually it's non-pitting eventually. CHF, if your heart is malfunctioning by ventricular failure, this can affect the lung, leading to dyspnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, or PND, cardiogenic pulmonary edema. You'll have tachycardia as well as high output cardiac failure. Everything is fast. Everything is dilated. Everything is distended, including the jugular vein. Neuropathy. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Of course, neuropathy with the wet beriberi. Yes, indeed. Neuropathy can happen with both. Other causes of beriberi. These are controversial. Like doctors argue with each other and then they start to curse and it gets ugly. Total parental nutrition. Some of these doofuses argue that TPN can actually lead to beriberi. Beri, beri. CHF patients who are hospitalized and on loop diuretics. Weight loss surgery complications. If you want to strengthen your memory, you should use your memory. Please bring a blank piece of paper and write down the symptoms of beriberi. Otherwise, there is no hope for you. How do you diagnose beriberi or thiamine deficiency? You just said it. It's thiamine deficiency. Vitamin B1 level will be low. Lactic acid will be high due to the deficiency of the famous pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme, which normally converts pyruvate into freaking acetyl-CoA. And then acetyl-CoA will go into the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle, and it will provide you with ATP. But if you are deficient in thiamine, pyruvate dehydrogenase is history. Pyruvate is now will go to the ugly way of lactate. That's an ugly road. Pyruvate has gone astray. Of course, lactate can lead to lactic acidosis and lactic acidosis can lead to high anion gap metabolic acidosis or HAGMA. Also, you can have decreased RBC transketolase activity because when you have vitamin B1 deficiency, you will not have any transketolase activity because vitamin B1 is a cofactor for transketolase. Treatment. If the patient is thiamine deficient, what do you think the treatment is? Give freaking thiamine. What if the patient is lacking glucose and thiamine? Should I give the thiamine first or the glucose first? Of course, the thiamine first. Otherwise, you might kill the patient. And we have discussed that in a previous video. Now, some nuggets of medicine. Let's talk about the high output cardiac failure or hyperdynamic circulation where everything is fast everything is distended, everything is dilated, you have severe vasodilation, and actually your blood is, circulation is a freaking joke. It's so fast, it's unbelievable. So, blood starts here, all of the vessels are vasodilated, quickly, quickly returns back. High output cardiac failure, quickly, quickly returns back. Quickly, quickly returns back. How is the cardiac output? It's called high output cardiac failure, so cardiac output has to be high. Get your head out of your sphincter. How about the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure or the preload? It's gonna be low. The only thing that increases the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is if the problem is in the freaking heart called cardiogenic shock. But this, the problem here is not in the heart. It's in the circulation. It's somewhere else, but it's not in your heart. So the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is low. How about the total peripheral resistance? It's gonna be low because everything is vasodilated. How about the murmur? Can you hear a murmur? Yes. It's going to be a flow murmur. Flow murmurs are always systolic and never diastolic. So what are the causes of flow murmur? Or what are the causes of high output cardiac failure? Or what are the causes of hyperdynamic circulation? Are you ready? Okay. Anemia, especially if it's chronic. Anaphylactic shock when the bee stings you. 
AV fistula or AV shunting. This could be congenital, this could be dysplastic. Acromegaly, beriberi, or vitamin B1 deficiency, or thiamine deficiency, or cacae. Pregnancy, Paget disease, because there is AV fistula in the bone. Carcinoid syndrome, because everything is dilated thanks to the freaking serotonin. And you will find increased 5-HIAA in the urine. Who named these things? 5-hydroxyindolacetic acid, which is the fancy name of saying serotonin. Sepsis, hyperthyroidism, because of increased metabolic demand. Everything is flowing fast, because the thyroxine is just like the stove of your body. It stimulates everything, but it decreases the lipid. Obesity, maybe because of vasodilation. So, A, 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 B, P, P, C, S, Lewis, ha, ha. Here is another nugget of medicine. Causes of edema of nutritional origin. This is sophisticated stuff. Either it's due to decreased protein intake, such as quash your core, or decreased vitamin B1 intake, such as wet berry berry. Some students use this crazy mnemonic, so very very instead of writing very very like this, it's B1, B1, in order to remember that there is B1 deficiency or thiamine deficiency. Who are these people? Here is another controversy and it gets ugly. Different classification. Some people classify, so this is basically we're talking here about B1 deficiency. So B1 deficiency, some people will classify it this way. B1 deficiency will lead to Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome or thiamine metabolism dysfunction syndromes, or beriberi, which includes all of these subtypes. Other authors will argue, beriberi is the same as thiamine deficiency. So, beriberi includes wernicke korsakoff thiamine metabolism dysfunction syndrome, and all of these subtypes. So, it's just a different classification. I tend to agree more with these guys. I disagree with these doofuses. Until the end of January, you can get 60% discount towards my antibiotics course. Use the promo code antibiotic60 at medicosisperfectionalist.com. And by the way, today, January 20th, is the last day because if you get this antibiotics course before the end of the day, you will receive another 80% discount towards my next course. It's going to be cardiac pharmacology, baby. It's good for pharmacology. It's also good for internal medicine. It's going to be available in February. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell and click on the join button to join the tribe. Follow me on all of these platforms. Support the channel on Patreon or PayPal. You can go to my website. Please do. If you have any questions, send me an email. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine just makes perfect sense.